Hey guys, so today we're going to take a quick look at how to use GDB to debug programs. GDB will become really useful, especially when we get to more complicated programs, and will save you a lot of time and stress. This program attempts to add two int arrays A and B element-wise, and stores the results in a third array C. So let's compile and run it. To compile, we can run make clean all, and that essentially compiles the files according to a make file. And to run it, we can do dot forward slash math. And you see we get a seg fault. Now, seg faults often occur because of invalid use of memory. So to see where we're using memory incorrectly, we can use GDB. And run GDB, we call GDB on the executable name, which is math. We can do layout source to see the source code. And then we can just run it. Now you see that we get a seg fault. To see where the seg fault occurs, we can run the backtrace command. And you see that it occurs on line 12. Now let's take a look at line 12. Note that this syntax is essentially the same as this syntax. They do the same thing. They're just accessing element i in an array. Now this syntax works because all we're doing is we're incrementing the pointer to the head of the array by the index and then dereferencing that value, which will give us the element at index i in the array. Now, a good thing to do in GDB is to just print the values. So if we print a, which is the pointer to the head of the array, we should get the address. And if we print b, we see that a and b are actually pretty close. And that makes sense because they're both declared locally and they are in the same stack frame. But if we print C, we see that we get an address that's really far away from these two addresses. And that makes sense because we declared a pointer, but it doesn't point to anything. So that means that if we print C and dereference it, we can't access that memory, which is probably where the seg vault is occurring. So instead of just declaring it as an int pointer, why don't we declare it as an int array? of size 6. So that should fix these issues. Now if we take a look at this function again, we want to understand what it's doing. It's taking all the elements in the array and adding them to the corresponding elements. So that means we need to be able to iterate through the array, and that's what this for loop is doing. So we want to go from the starting index, which is always 0, and go up until the length of the array. So all this logic is correct. But let's make sure that the length is correct. So to do so, we can print length. And we would expect it to be 6, because 6 is the length of the array. But here we get 8, which leads us to believe that this is a buggy line of code. Now, the reason why it's 8 is because, if you notice, a is just an int pointer. It points to the head of the array, but int pointers are of size 8. And so in C, there's no way to get the length of an array. So the best way to do so is to pass it in as an extra parameter to the function. So we can add a parameter, len. And when we call the function, we need to specify that the arrays are of length 6. So if we do so, we can quit. Let's compile. And we can run. And now you see that for the first six elements, we are getting the right results because the additions are correct. However, we are printing more than six elements, which leads us to believe that the print array function might have an issue. So again, we can go to GDB, layout source to see the source code, and let's break on name. So you can break here, and we'll step through the code and see what's going on. And then we can run, and then we can press next. So instead of typing n each time you want to go next, GDB remembers the last command you typed. So if I just hit enter again, it'll also go next. And then because we want to look at the print array function, instead of typing next, we would want to type s because that stands for step, and that will allow us to step into the print array function. Now, again, what should print array do? It should iterate through the array 
and print each element. So that's what this for loop is attempting to do. Again, this is the same logic as the for loop above. We're starting from index zero and going up until length and incrementing the pointer each time and then printing the value at that location. Again, this notation here can be simply written as array bracket i, but both of these notations are correct. Again, we need to make sure that the length of the array is correct because if it's wrong, that's a good indication as to why we were printing more than six values earlier. So let's just print length. And now you see that length here is six. But don't be fooled. The reason why it's six is because we haven't run this command yet. This length is still storing the length from earlier. So let's, let's step through this step and then print length. And now you see that after we run this command, the length is now eight in this function. And that's incorrect because now we're gonna iterate through more elements than the array has. And the reason why it's eight again is because the int pointer is always size eight. So just as we did above, we can pass in an extra parameter and get rid of this line. And whenever we call print array, we just make sure we specify the length of the array. Now we should quit GDB and compile. And if we run, you see that we get the right answer. This time it's a C++ program that takes in a vector and increments every odd number in that vector by increment. So let's go through and simply compile and see what it's giving us. And let's run the code and we see that it's failed because our output is one, two, three, four, five, six, whereas we expected it to be two, two, four, four, six, six. So again, we're applying this function on this vector and it should be taking in every odd number, one, three, and five, and adding one to it to obtain two, two, four, four, six, six. So let's go through GDB and see what's happening. Again, we call GDB on the executable, not the source file. We can type layout source. And let's break on line six because that's where our function is. And we can run it. So let's go into the for loop. And since this isn't sag faulting, we know that the program runs fine. It's just the logic is not correct. So let's see. Let's see what vi currently is. It should be, i should be zero. So vi should be one. So we can print vi. And yeah, we see it's one. It's the first element in the vector. And so because one is an odd number, we should be incrementing it. So let's step. And you see how it jumped back up? That means that we skipped the first element and we didn't increment it. And we can see why. What is this line doing? If vi, the element at position i, mod two equals zero, then we increment it. Actually, the problem is, is that mod two means that it's an even number if it equals zero. So technically, if we wanted to increment odds, it should be when mod two isn't equal to zero. So let's try that and run it again. Make clean all. And you see nothing's changed. So that's an issue. We can go back into GDP, layout source, break on six, and run. And let's step through again. 
So let's, you see how we went into the if loop this time and we're about to increment? Let's see what v of zero is now. So we can print v of zero. So even though we went in and added increment to v zero, it's still one. And the problem is with this line. As you can see, all we're doing is adding increment to vi, but we're not setting vi to be the addition of itself and increment. So we need to do plus equals, and let's run it again and see what happens. Again, here's something weird. Even though we're adding and setting it equal to the addition of itself and increment, the vector itself still looks exactly the same. So that hints that we are not actually changing the vector that's being passed in. And let's break on six and go to layout source. So we've run, let's go. So after we do this, let's see what v of i is. So print v of zero, should now be two, it's not one anymore. Which means that we are adding to the first element, which is weird. So how about we go through, and after we go through a little bit, we can see that if we print V, we see that it's a vector and we have two, two, four, four. We haven't gotten to this element yet, so we can step through one more time. We increment it. And now if you see print v, we do have the correct vector. It's 224466, which is what we expected. So we are performing the correct operation on the vector in this function. But if you see when we return, if we print vec, which is the vector that we passed into the function, you see it hasn't changed. So that means that we are passing by value and not by reference. Passing by value means that when the vector is being passed into this function, a copy of it is being used instead of the vector itself. So that's why we should pass by reference and that should fix things. Again, we can compile and run. And now you see we succeeded. So the error here was one in the logic of adding to the correct number, we should be adding to the odd number. So when mod two is not zero, and we need to make sure that we are setting each element to be the addition of itself and increment, and making sure that if we wanna modify the vector passed into it, we need to be passing by reference. So this is a quick glimpse into how I use GDB to debug programs. For more help, I encourage you to take a look at all the resources available.